for you, and we're going to go through the long-term and short-term projections uh, that we have going on here. Um, as you can see, I have the Litecoin versus the uh, Bitcoin, which is not a normal thing that I really focus on, but in this case, uh, I, I think that uh, you know most of what I'm, I've stated is coming true. Uh, Ethereum and Litecoin are being bought up, and the reason they're being bought up is because the hedge funds uh, that are getting into the space, they're very light <laughs> on Litecoin and Ethereum. So what they're doing is they're rebalancing their efforts and, and diversifying. And that was a natural thing that uh, you know I, I thought was likely to occur, and sure enough, it did. This was a great buying opportunity down here and it's already started to make its move. Uh, if you wanted a short-term trade, you could have exited right up here, or if you want the longer-term trade, if you remember, I'm looking for numbers that go all the way back up here, and even higher. If we go back throughout here, you can get numbers that go up to here, up to 12. I'll do future lines, and maybe even the highs uh, from here. But this is a breakout and uh, it consolidated and everything came into play and that was one of the reasons that I said this was a great buying opportunity way back when. Um, more of a long-term hold, it's not, you know, if you wanted the short-term trade up to here, great, but everything in crypto is just being held onto and bought uh, by uh, the powers that be, let's put it that way. So I think that we're going to get later in the year a bigger move, as you know, that's my planning. Um, so let's go back to Bitcoin. This is Litecoin. You know my thoughts on that. I think Ethereum and Litecoin are going to catch, and they already have. Let's take a look at Litecoin, for example. And there it is. Litecoin breaks out and just shoots up. That's basically it. Um, this is, you know, again... Uh, where can it go? It can go much higher, uh, probably closer to the 3,800 level before it starts to find resistance, and maybe even as high as 4K. I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, the 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 hard part is the the there's not much of it to go around, <laughs> uh, especially with the DeFi space. Uh, that's one of the reasons you see the gas fees being so high. Um, it's just that it's there's too much demand and uh, these hedge funds that are getting into it to hold on to it for the future are just exacerbating that they're making it even worse so that's why you're getting this type of price action where it just makes higher highs and, and keeps going and that's even in the face of the May to July uh, downturn for Bitcoin which is normal and that's why we're not really making big moves up to the trend line up here. Um, if we were to blow up on Ethereum, where the supply became really bad and we went above 4,000 or some crazy numbers like up to 5,000, let's say it really would roll, then Bitcoin would snap and start to make bigger moves up to here uh, during the summer. That's possible, but not likely. Um, I told you ahead of time, and you know, I was looking for this, is that this is May. We are now in May, okay? May is particularly weak for stocks and for most, uh, you know, it, it's mainly because of the, the hedge funds, they have to rebalance and they have to um, look to take profits. That's it. Just that simple. And it has to do with... Uh, accounting and all kinds of things that are uh, I would say more political in nature and, and just cyclical in nature as well it's just uh, you know and, and a lot of these places the, you know there's a lot of people in the financial industry that make their living uh, by the end of year and their end of year actually ends in one of the segments is in May so they have to rebalance and uh, that's where you get that from and then towards the end of the year, they do the same thing, and then you get the buying, and uh, that's what I would be looking for for Bitcoin, um, because correlating-wise, uh, the correlation between the stock market and Bitcoin has been, and crypto, I should say, is pretty 
uh, pretty uh, parallel in, a, in alignment uh, is the only way to put it. And uh, there might be exaggerations because, you know, we're in crypto, it's always exaggerated. But not for the market. Uh, you know, the, the stock market, very overbought. People are going to have to take profits. And um, they'll probably do it within this time frame between May and July. And that will probably help push uh, Bitcoin back lower. And uh, even after the run of Litecoin and Ethereum, um, it, it, it probably will make for a dull market to some degree. We'll see. I mean, I don't know. I mean, maybe the there's so much interest that there's just not enough supply. That is a possibility, but statistically, it's not likely. So I would be looking for lower numbers, especially on Bitcoin. And, uh, you know, uh, I am tempted to go over and if I short more of BNB, if it can get above this line up here, 700, I will probably start to hedge it with buying Bitcoin. Um, that would be great. This makes higher highs and this one goes over and makes lower highs, let's say. And uh, that would give me some value there between that type of trade and offer me some protection as well. So that I would probably be looking to do in the future. Uh, I was thinking about it if I could have had a good breakout on uh, theory and to push things higher, but it, it's kind of just trending. It's slow. This is not exactly huge in the sense that, uh, uh, you know, until it really starts to affect others like Bitcoin, it, all it's doing is going on its own. Um, so it, it's not having any global impact. I want to see it having an impact on Bitcoin and then um, people are like, oh my God, Ethereum's going, I got to buy Bitcoin too. And then you'll see Bitcoin get above 60K. Well, that's not really happening, is it? No. Bitcoin's stuck over here and it's actually pulling back while Ethereum is going higher. So that gives us a, a moment to pause and say, well, that's kind of confusing. So, you know, the overall theme is very simple. Don't do anything. Um, it's, uh, statistics say it's likely to drop. Um, so we're likely to see more weakness in this period of time. And I have to go with that. Uh, I'm not in the mood to take any risks. Uh, so I will wait and let the market tell me what to do. Uh, I don't see any good prime trades to take advantage of at the moment. Um, so I will uh, wait. I, I have seen certain other coins, smaller ones, that you would think that would join Ethereum and others, but they're not. They're pulling back, right? Look at this one. If you remember um, this banker token that went all the way up here, and I said this was a good sell above this line. And look how far that went. Amazing. Um, but it's still pulling back and there's more weakness and there's other coins that demonstrate this as well and we have to uh, keep note of that because you don't want to get caught in the wrong ones and um, so we'll see we'll see what happens uh, but I'll just keep it my powder dry and I will wait for some good opportunities I'm sure there will come in the near future but uh, at the moment, uh, wait and see. Uh, we, we wait, we watch, observe, and uh, we'll plan for the future and go from there. Anyway, that's the weekly update. And I hope you've enjoyed it. And I will probably update you later in the week. We'll see if we get any movement. I'm constantly watching for that. And um, I hope you guys have a great week.